My name is Kincaid and I am so excited to show you this Suzuki RM125 build from start to finish. I've put hundreds of hours into this bike and I'm so proud of the outcome. I want to give a massive thank you to all of the sponsors who helped out with this build and made it possible without me going broke. There are tons of great parts and components on this bike. All links to sponsors will be in the description below as well as links to my social media and tools and parts that I used on this bike. Without further ado, I hope you enjoy the build. I bought this 2003 Suzuki RM125 from a 13 year old kid who tore it apart. He had hopes to rebuild it himself but became overwhelmed. I spent a thousand dollars and brought it home in cardboard boxes. It seemed mostly complete but you never really know when you buy a bike in boxes. Over the past few years I had the opportunity to build a CR, YZ and KX125 and I had been on the hunt for a Suzuki. I had a vision for an incredible Suzuki that I wanted to bring to life, and this is it. The crankcase sustained some major pitting from a previous failure where the bike had blown up. I was able to buff it out with the magic of Prime MX cleaning wheels. Once the cases were fully stripped down, I sent them off to Greg Hitchko for some vapor blasting. I continued my progress by stripping the cylinder and sending it off to Millennium Technologies for replating, along with the transmission for micro polishing. I also sent them the crankshaft with a new connecting rod from Pro X as the rod bearing was completely blown up. Radiators were bent, grimy, and caked in JB Weld, so I sent them off to Milers for repair as well. I had some discussions with MX Tech Suspension about what we could do to improve the suspension on this old bike, and I ended up sending the forks off to them to receive some blackjack cartridges. With so many parts sent off to so many people and companies, I decided to continue my progress by stripping the chassis down to get it ready for powder coating of Montana. After powder coating of Montana sandblasted my parts, I brought some of them home to clean up a few imperfections and remove casting lines. From there, everything went back to powder coating of Montana, awaiting color. I spent many, many hours using this Harbor Freight bench buffer with Prime MX cleaning wheels to restore axles and other components to better the new condition. Sometimes I wish that this buffer had an hour meter. Whenever possible, I ground the casting marks out of parts to give them that nice factory look. Also, I want to take a quick moment to give a shout out to my good friend Chandler Bolden. We went to high school together and he produces beats. He produced all the beats you hear in this video specifically for use in this video. He's a great friend of mine who makes awesome beats and if you ever have a need for beats, I would highly recommend checking him out. As parts slowly transformed from grimy to restored, I chose to use brand new Pro X bearings throughout this build. Decal Works made the graphics and the seat cover for this bike and they made an incredible custom seat cover to match my design. 
I decided to install the seat cover while I awaited other parts in the mail and procrastinated a few other areas of the build. Initially, my plan with the wheels was to only reuse the stock hubs, but not the rims. Unfortunately, I couldn't find gold rims, so I instead decided to have the stock rims anodized. At the point when I tore these wheels apart, I did not yet know that, which is why I did not remove the tires before cutting the wheels apart. Hence why you see me cutting the tires off with a hacksaw like a barbarian. Although the rims were very beat up, with a lot of time and effort on the bench buffer and with the Dremel using Prime MX cleaning wheels, they were restorable. I got them looking almost new before I sent them off to TCR along with the nipples for anodizing. Shortly after, I received a package from Millennium Technologies with the old rod bearing as a souvenir and the crankshaft with a brand new Pro-X connecting rod installed, along with freshly vapor blasted cases from Greg Hitchco the engine build was finally able to begin. I washed the cases thoroughly in my sink with Dawn dish soap to make sure that any abrasive material from vapor blasting was fully removed, and then I baked the cases in the oven and froze the bearings to aid with installation. For this build, I used a brand new fastener kit from Fastmetric for all new engine hardware. When you're going this all out on a build, new bolts go a long way in the look of the bike, so I was really, really happy to have Fastmetric on board with this project. OEM clutch basket had severe notching, so I decided to upgrade to a Wiseco basket. The Wiseco clutch basket has numerous benefits over OEM, and I'm really excited to have it in this bike. Installing the piston is always an exciting progress mark during the engine build and I just knew that this bike was going to absolutely rip with a brand new Pro-X piston along with a freshly replated cylinder from Millennium Technologies. for a fathead cylinder head on this build. Luke at Fathead Racing is one of the nicest people you'll ever deal with and he is incredibly knowledgeable. 
These fat heads have interchangeable domes so that I can change the compression of the engine and switch between pump gas or race gas. Luke also anodizes these heads in a variety of colors and offers custom laser etching on the heads. So I ended up getting my initials on this one, which I was really excited about. After some consideration, I decided to paint the engine covers, so I began preparation. Duplicolor sent me this prep spray that I used in the pre-paint process. VHT sent me the primer and engine enamel that I used after proper preparation. The durability of this paint is comparable to powder coating. Duplicolor and VHT are paid sponsors of this video. With that said, I have been using their products long before they became a sponsor of mine, and I stand by the quality of their products. Now, if we could all just take a moment to appreciate this gorgeous engine before it goes in the frame. I picked up my parts from Powder Coating of Montana, and I was a little bit nervous about my choice of yellow, but very happy with it once I saw it in person. Powder Coating of Montana did an incredible job. I started getting the chassis together by installing some IMS Pro Series foot pegs. On this build, I chose to run Dirt Trick sprockets not only for their great looks, but for their one year warranty, durability, weight, and the fact that they're made in the USA. So it wasn't until the engine build was complete and installed in the frame that I realized the Kickstarter pivot was filled with dirt and rust. This was literally the most I struggled with removing a bolt on the entire build. It took my impact screwdriver and a sledgehammer to finally get it removed and then a lot of effort to get the Kickstarter off of its shaft. From there, it went pretty smoothly with re-greasing it and making it good as new. After a whole lot of anticipation, the suspension finally arrived from MX Tech. They managed to modify these forks to fit their blackjack cartridges as well as customize their national shock to fit this bike. 
I can say with a high level of confidence, there are very few RM125s that will handle like this one. No Toil is not even one of my sponsors, but I just have to say I am a huge No Toil fan. I wash my air filters in the washing machine and dry them in the dryer. This Pro X air filter got a nice coating of No Toil before installation. In addition to engine hardware, I utilized a fast metric kit for new plastic bolts as well. The ignition cover was a step behind the other engine covers due to the fact that I wanted to mask the letters off yellow before painting the rest of the cover black. Per VHT's instructions, I gave the yellow an entire week to cure before doing the coat of black, and I used some Dupacolor foaming prep spray to make sure all oil residue was removed before doing the black coat. From there, I followed the instructions to bake it in the oven once again to make sure the paint was fully cured before installing it on the bike. Radiators came back from Mylers looking amazing with real welds in place of JB Weld and completely straightened out. I was a little disappointed to find that the seat did not fit properly with the Polysport Restyle Kit, so I made some modifications to the side panels. Again, Decal Work supplied these awesome custom graphics and I used their application kit for graphic installation which really helps eliminate air bubbles and ensure proper graphic placement. I want to give a quick shout out to my amazing girlfriend, Ren, who got me these awesome Engelbert Strauss overalls on a trip to Germany. These have been great for working and poorly dancing in the shop. At this point, I tried the seat again and it still did not fit, so I made further modifications to the restyle kit.
I used RIT dye to dye some of the OEM cable guides black and this stuff works like a charm. After this, I finally got around to rebuilding the rear brake, which I had been procrastinating for ages. The rims and spoke nipples finally came back from TCR looking beautiful and the hubs came back from Powder Coating of Montana with a perfect color match to the graphics. I used brand new Pro X bearings and seals in the hubs and then proceeded to lace up the wheels with some brand new Excel spokes. I opted to run a 51 tooth Dirt Tricks Zirconium Steel Sprocket. This geared the bike down just a little bit because I knew I'd be doing some trail riding on it along with a little moto riding. And from there I went with the Shinko 540 series tire combination. Shinkos have been awesome tires for me over the years and I'm stoked to be running them on this build. The OEM front rim had to be drilled out to fit Excel spoke nipples, so after 36 holes, I was able to lace up the front wheel. I will admit that I would be lying if I said I didn't pop one tube. To make this build even better, I bought a modern CRF450 front brake on eBay, which bolted right up to the RM and is much stronger than the OEM RM front brake. I was initially using a Chinese throttle assembly I bought on eBay since the original was missing, but it ended up being junk, so I had to swap out the throttle assembly, throttle tube, and grips. So with this change, I decided to switch it up on the grips and went with some red ODI lock-ons, which I think really tied the bike together nicely. After six months of hard work, the vision I had for an incredible Suzuki RM125 build had finally been brought to life.
bike finally complete, it was time for the first ride. <laughs> This thing is so sick. <laughs> oh.